Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. We are going to be discussing reporting options in Release 12 Unveiled. So what are you going to do about it? My name is Shannon Krebs, and I'm the Oracle Strategy and Business Development Manager here at Insight. So a little bit about me. I actually was at Oracle for 15 years prior to joining Insight. I was a buyer in our purchasing department, so I used the product as an end user. I also did training on the product globally to our customers and consultants. I spent some time in development where I worked on the trading community architecture product, as well as the OPSFI, Oracle Public Sector Financials International Group, which was at the time actually responsible for taking a lot of those localizations and putting them back into the core product in Release 12. And then my last few years there, I spent the UK public sector sales consulting team working with existing customers on how to best use our applications. At Insight, I focus purely on customer development and support, so I spend my time with our existing customers, getting them up to speed on the latest happenings at Insight, as well as taking their requirements and recommendations and working with development directly. And then development will often provide community previews for new features and such that have been developed in the software. So I work with development back on the customer side, letting everybody see what's going on. So that's a little bit about me. Today, we're going to discuss reporting in Release 12. Now, we're going to go through a few things on our agenda first. The first is going to be Oracle Financials in Release 12, what's new? It's pretty important to understand how the structure has changed so that you can understand the reporting differences. We also are going to cover what reporting looked like in 11i and then what reporting looks like in Release 12, focusing on two of the main differences with ADI and Report Manager and Discoverer. And then finally, how you can develop an action plan for moving forward. So let's begin. With Release 12, there were really six major initiatives within the financials world. The first three had the biggest impact on reporting for us. So we're going to highlight those in the most detail, but we'll mention the other, uh, the remaining three as well. So the first one is ledgers and ledger sets. So set of books have been replaced with ledgers in Release 12. We no longer have an SOB. We now have a ledger and a ledger set. In a set of books, there were the three C's, currency, calendar, and chart of accounts. With ledgers, we've added a fourth C, accounting convention. <laughs> the idea behind this was to segregate your data like your organization is structured, and it also gives you flexible reporting on the structures you now have. You might have a global reporting structure, a local reporting structure, or different ledgers for statutory or consolidated reporting. This is something you can now do with ledgers. You also get the bonus of a ledger set, which allows you to link multiple ledgers together to perform actions like opening or closing multiple periods at once, doing an allocations across ledgers, etc. Um, and you can also report across those. The migration routines in an upgrade will go ahead and take a set of books and convert it automatically to a ledger for you. The second thing we have is multi-org access control, or MOAC. MOAC allows users to access multiple operating units at one time without requiring a separate responsibility. So a good example is that this is often used in a shared services environment. You might have a clerk that is allowed to enter invoices for multiple OUs without switching their hat. MOAC is controlled based on a person's responsibility and some profile options that are set up. The third is subledger accounting. And this is actually the big one here. A subledger accounting provides a new layer of data that's introduced in Release 12. In 11i, you might have a set of rules in AR that would generate accounting for you, and another set of rules in AP, maybe another set in projects. And when you were in GL and wanted to drill back to the subledgers, you would go directly there. What SLA does is two key things. The first is it creates a presentation layer that holds all the information from the subledgers in detail in one place. So you no longer need to post to GL in detail. A lot of people would do this through creating a lot of extra descriptive flex fields to store information such as job costing codes or care home details or any additional information they wanted to see in GL without having to drill back. Now, all of this can be available in the subledger accounting layer. So you'll define how much detail is actually shown in the SLA, and it allows someone in GL to avoid having to go back to the subledger directly. You do still have the option to do so, and it can be a bit of a training issue. So often someone will start in GL, perhaps in an account analysis screen, drill to the SLA layer and see the information. That might be a web-based form. And then they drill back into, say, an invoice, an AP, back into a core form. So there's a bit of a training issue for people as you're moving from layer to layer and looking at the information. Another big thing that SLA provides is the ability to override rules or routines you have for generating account codes. 
So for example, if you have a rule about an account code not being billed to a particular company, you can set that up in SLA, and if something comes through from AR with that account code combination, you can override it and replace it, what you've created in SLA as your overall rule. This is the fourth C, which is accounting method. And there might be different information or ideas about how you want to set this up. The idea is that with the SLA, it is the single source of truth and where your auditor should go to look at information. You can take advantage of this if you want to, or if not, your migration routines will go ahead and populate information just like you had it before. So those are really the three big financial changes in Release 12. The three others, the tax engine. This is now new where in the past, in 11i, you would set up tax rules in each subledger. But in Release 12, you now have a new module, and it's called the eBusiness Tax Engine. It has a centralized control way of setting up your tax rules. So when people were first upgrading to Release 12, this was an area that caused a little bit of heartache. Um, not a lot of people understood the tax engine and how it worked. At this point, there are definitely more people out there that understand this. And it's just important to make sure you have someone in your organization or consultants that really understand the business side of tax. Also standard migration routines that will bring everything over. It's just a tricky area and one you should be careful of. The next is intercompany. Intercompany has actually been really beefed up with the advanced global intercompany systems for inter and intra company trading. So if you're doing a lot of trading between departments, for example, maybe catering is uh, cross charging to finance for events, you can automatically create invoices and build an audit trail for this. And then finally, we have the bank model. The bank model is really a result of the new payment engine that's part of payables in release 12, and it allows you to automate your payment routines. Bank accounts are now held in TCA, the trading community architecture, and only need to be set up once, and they can also be shared across operating units. So those are really the six major initiatives that Oracle did when creating Release 12. So now that you're going to Release 12, a couple of things to keep in mind. First of all, it's a significant upgrade. This isn't something like moving from 11.59 to 11.510, which I actually know people who upgraded in over a weekend without really feeling the impact of. Release 12 is going to really take some time and effort for you to understand what the changes are and how they're going to impact your organization. Not to mention a lot of the changes are under the covers. So again, things like the banking model or TCA, there are things that will be there that you might not necessarily understand or you might not necessarily see, but will have an impact on how things work. And the final thing is you need to think about reporting. Reporting is something that often gets last, left until the last minute. And we're trying to make sure that you think about that as part of your implementation process, not at the end of it. So first, let's talk about the reporting options in 11i. So if we start at the bottom and go left to right, here at the beginning thing we had were our Oracle standard reports and RxI and concurrent manager. So those were all the standard reports that come with the system and can be scheduled to run whenever you like and automatically sent to anyone in the organization. The problem most people have with these reports is first it's static data, it's got limited information, and you can't drill down on any of the detail. Um, RxI reports were actually developed by the fixed assets team and is a little bit of a precursor to fat extracts that come in release 12, which we'll mention in a bit. They basically give you the ability to kind of pull in more columns and a lot more data to play with. It's usually a bit of a cross between a standard report and an ad hoc report that exists. We also have XML Publisher, which is a great tool that allows you to make reports look pretty. It uses XML templates, and while you don't need to know how to program XML, it certainly helps. Um, templates are really used to have nicer or nicely presented reports. So some examples might be a customer invoice where you can easily put in a logo and determine what information you want to display, or checks that you might be giving to suppliers. We have Report Manager, which is really a repository and a way of storing reports and publishing them to the, your users. And then good old ADI, the Application Desktop Integrator, the best friend an accountant can have. A way to publish reports out, and then with a bit of drill down, people can see more detailed information. And especially this is used with FSGs. FSGs are a financial statement generator, and it's made up of row sets, column sets, and content sets for creating data and displaying it in a financial report. We also have Oracle reports, which are really custom reports that are done by IT. So all of those are standard ways of generating information out of Oracle Financials in 11i. Uh, Discoverer for 10G or 11G is also has always been the main ad hoc query tool. It really consists of a tool for creating a report, and there's usually an end-user layer to hide some of that complexity from your end-users. It's really widely used in the other subledgers, like your 
payables, your purchasing, your projects and such to get more detailed information and transactional information for users. And then finally, we have OBIEE, the Oracle Business Intelligence Enterprise Edition, which came through an acquisition Oracle had with Seaball. And for those people that have the time and energy and budget, um, OBIEE can be a great tool to give you a series of dashboards and KPIs that really track the overall structure of your business. There are different functional areas that you can procure, like a procurement analytics package or a financial analytics package, and they usually provide a good starter for an executive dashboard. So that's what we have in 11i. However, one of the things we discovered was that people often take all of this information and still put it out to Excel. So they might have it in Excel or put it in an access database. There can often be large hits to your system as people are taking tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of transactions and then putting them in Excel or access so that they can do really the reporting that they want to see by drilling down and getting more information. So in release 12, um, people want to know, can I just do what I've always done before? So if we start, take a look at things again from the bottom left hand side moving around, we still have Oracle standard reports. However, one thing what Oracle has really stopped doing is creating so many reports for new features. So often when new functionality is introduced, you won't find a standard report for that. What you find now are more fat extracts that take a lot of data for you to work with as opposed to specific reports for each need. So there are fewer reports that are much broader and you can start to tailor those with the BI Publisher templates. Oracle renamed XML Publisher to BI Publisher, and now many of the concurrent requests that have been formatted using this new BI Publisher. So the standard reports actually look a lot better. For example, the invoices on hold report in AP is now nicely formatted, and it just really is a more legible report to look at. Now, while the initial goal was to create BI templates for all the standard reports, there are still a few that haven't been converted. So if you really want a nice look and feel for those standard reports, you might need to, you will need to recreate them using BI Publisher. You'll define the output and the formatting and determine if it's a PDF, PDF, Excel, or Word document. So ADI and Reports Manager. The biggest change is that ADI has been converted to a web-based tool called Web ADI. All of the report creating and publishing aspects of the tool have been moved into Report Manager. So now Web ADI is basically used as a journal upload tool and Report Manager and BI Publisher handles all of the reporting functionality. We're going to talk more about this in the next slide. With FSGs, there really have been no major changes. The way you create them is still the same. Um, people often ask if there have been any improvements or changes, and the truth is there really haven't been. They have taken a look at the impact of ledgers and ledger sets and um, plan for that, but other than that, there really aren't a lot of changes. The biggest change is that you can't run them through ADI like you used to. Oracle Reports still exists and is a developer tool, though some people are moving more to BI Publisher Enterprise Edition as a way to generate more custom reports. So that's actually a decision point you want to think about when you're doing your migration from an older version of Oracle Reports to a newer version, or just decide if you want to retrain your people to use BI Publisher Enterprise Edition instead. Now Discoverer is still there as well. Um, it's an 11G when you're in Release 12, and we're going to talk about that again more in the next slide. For OBIEE, one thing to note is OBIEE actually is often on a different release plan than the Oracle EBS applications. However, if you have OBIEE, there is a release 12 content layer, so you can still get information from there. And our experience has really shown us that people tend to use about 10 to 20 percent of those reports and dashboards out of the box, and then really configure and tailor the remaining reports they need um, using the Oracle Answers tool. Now, a new one we've put in here is the Fusion Accounting Hub. The Fusion Accounting Hub is there as Oracle moves from its new strategy moving towards Fusion. One of the key strengths they'll mention in Fusion is the ability to have embedded analytics. So with, when you're within a page or looking at information, you can actually see reports and transactional information that's there. So one of the ideas behind Fusion as well is a coexistence strategy where you might have EBS running and then some Fusion applications running on the side. So the idea is that you might have the Fusion Application Hub running on the side where you take your information from your EBS, put it into the Fusion Accounting Hub, and then do use that for your reporting. Um, it's just something to look at or something to consider as Oracle does mention Fusion as a coexistence strategy. But again, what we tend to find is people still in Release 12 have all of these tools for reporting, but they don't always give them exactly what they need. So information is taken out, 
put into Excel or put into an access database, and then people tend to query off of old and static information and then reformat it in a way that you know is more appropriate and meets their needs. So let's talk about two of these in more detail. The first is changes in ADI and Report Manager. So two important things about ADI in 11i. First, it was used as an upload tool for journal entries or budgeting. And second, there was a report publishing aspect of it. So in release 12, ADI no longer exists and has been replaced by web ADI. So that has an HTML screen. It takes you through step by step to produce the same re results for uploading your information. And this was actually available in 11i, so you might be using it. If you want to do report publishing in the way that you used to use Report Manager, there are going to be some changes. In the past, you might have said, OK, I'm in ADI. I'm going to run an FSG. I'm going to define its formatting. I'm going to create a template. I'm going to put a logo on it. I'm going to decide where I want to publish it. And boom, off you go. Those steps are now broken down into a couple of tools. So first, defining the layout in the template, putting a logo on it, that is actually all going to be done as part of BI Publisher. Then when it comes to determining, you know, generating the out output and storing it and determining how users can access it, that's where Report Manager comes into play. So people will often ask, do you have to use Report Manager or can you still use Concurrent Manager to run these standard requests for FSGs? The answer is you can still use Concurrent Manager for that, but you're going to have a very basic output. If you want to be able to drill down, that's when you'll need to use BI Publisher. And there's actually a little checkbox there that can say allow for drill down. And then using Report Manager to run and manage the output is how it can be handled. Report Manager holds a central repository within Oracle, and it only publishes within that repository, so it won't publish to a shared drive. One of the nice things that Report Manager does give you the ability to do is take reports and actually automatically store them on the navigator for some of your users. It's just important to remember that these are point-in-time reports. And if you're creating new reports for users on a weekly or monthly basis, that area can start to hold a lot of information, and storage and maintenance of this can be tricky. Now, the 12.2 RCD is available. It looks like there's some changes with how this is going to be handled in 12.2. Um, it looks like they're talking about an external repository and being able to email to external users. It's going to be a bit of a technical release, moving to some web logic components and such, but it's definitely worth checking out that when it becomes available, as there will be some changes made. Discoverer. So Discoverer is that historic tool of choice for reporting on financials. Don't worry about it going away. There are a lot of rumors that it's going to be gone, but no, it's still there in release 12 and nothing's happening to it. It's also covered by the EBS lifetime support policy. Uh, the things you need to think about are the fact that if that although you might have an end user layer for release 12, it won't necessarily work with all of the reports you've already created because there have been a lot of table changes. Also, you might need to do some migration of Discover itself because you need to be on the latest release as extended support for 10G ended in December 2011. So what did I mean about thinking about the impact it will have on your reports? The first is that there are a lot of new table changes and structural changes that have happened, and this will have an impact on your reports within Discoverer. First of all, there's been the introduction of invoice lines, which are now split out. So any AP report that looks at invoices will need to be reviewed. You now have two layers. There's like a parent-child structure, and it can really create a bit of a headache when you're creating reports. There are also invoice categories which are new. They allow for reporting purchasing, reporting on purchasing categories on invoices, even when not matched to a purchase order. Um, suppliers are now in TCA, so the whole data model has changed. So any kind of reports that include supplier information will need to be renewed. As we mentioned before, with the introduction of subledger accounting, there are these new XLA tables, which give you a whole additional layer of information to report on. So that'll be a, a new way of looking at your data. Tax tables are now in a centralized tax engine, and receivables has an advanced collections that has replaced the collections workbench. So there are some significant changes that will definitely have an impact on any reports that you've already created. And then really just a general note is that Discover is quite an old tool, and you might want to think about your current investment in Discover and the skills you have in maintaining it. So while Oracle is definitely still doing our research and development, on Discover, it tends to really be about integration with the middleware. So that would be functionality like making sure it works with BI Publisher and OBIEE. There are tools like Oracle Delivers for um, publishing reports and BI Spreadsheet and so on. So it's great if you have an OBIEE strategy, but if you aren't using OBIEE, 
you're probably not going to be seeing a lot of new changes within the Discoverer tool. However, what do users really, really want when it comes to a reporting solution? What they really want is easy access to information. So often they've been running a lot of reports, shooting them off to Excel, and then digging around there to get them. They don't want that. They really want to be able to just ask the questions and get what they need quickly. So they want reports the way they want them, when they want them. They don't often want to have to go back to IT and ask for a new report to be created, or even to someone in the finance department to ask them what that number is. They really want the ability to do easy reporting their own on summary or consolidated balances. They would like the ability to drill down and see the information they need, the ability to look at the different transaction layers. So maybe look at overall invoice information for a supplier, drill down and see the individual invoices, drill down more and see distributions, drill down more and see purchase orders these were matched to. Your users want the ability to interact with their data. So it's more than just a transaction listing and a static report. They really want real-time information of what's been going on. At Insight, these are just a couple of screenshots of some of our reports that are generated straight out of the system. So on the top, we have our filter boxes, like company, department, account. Those would be your chart of account segment. And then below would be some standard reports that we've just created quite quickly that allow users to expand and collapse information. They can drill down and see what they would like. This is an example of um, an invoice report for invoices on hold that someone might be able to see where they can query data and look at it in a summary form. We also have the ability to do charting and graphing. So while a lot of people look at the OBIEE tool as a great way for doing pictures and graphs and charting and such, we do have the ability to do it in Insight as well. Often a picture can be a, a good representation of what's going on and useful at a management level. So on the right-hand side is just an example of a simple pie graph we would do. On the left-hand side with a circle box, it's just showing you an example of how really at any level within Insight, we can look at a transaction, follow links, and actually drill down to more detail. We also have the ability to do things like conditional formatting. So we can highlight issues that we might see. In this case, if we're looking at our suppliers and what's happening to them, I might want to highlight suppliers that I've got set up with payment terms of immediate, because I know that's actually a problem. I'm pretty, I need to be pretty tough about what suppliers I pay outside of my standard payment terms. So I might want to know why those are set up in a particular way. Some of the new things that are going on with Release 12, some of the data challenges you might have, would be actually reporting on that new subledger um, accounting level in those transactions. One thing we've created is a subledger accounting template that allows you to pull information from the SLA. And then the right side, we've got a little side panel which can actually highlight the information without needing to drill down and see it. We also have the ability to do, go ahead and do reporting on your ledgers and your ledger sets that might exist that you'll create in Release 12. At Insight, we've got over 650 customers in over 45 countries worldwide with about 55,000 people using the software. So we're quite familiar with the kind of financial questions or issues people have and helping them to develop solutions to meet those needs. So for you, you need to help develop an action plan. Check out what reporting tools you currently have and how they're gonna fit in with your organization. Look at the new release 12 functionality and figure out what those reporting implications are. So you, you're already going to spend a lot of time figuring out how these changes will occur when you're doing your upgrade. But think about once people are using the system, how they're going to want to get information. So all the things we've mentioned before about the new payment manager, looking at collections and the advanced collections, AP invoice lines, suppliers, subledger accounting, TCA, all of these are going to be important things to think about. Make sure you identify users and their reporting requirements early. You don't want to wait until the last minute because people are going to be so frustrated about getting information in the system, they're going to be more frustrated if they can't get it out. You want to make that whole transition easy for them to do. So decide when you're going to introduce reporting aspects of your project and then plan for reconciliation and report building. If you're going to be transforming any of your Discover reports, make sure you allocate time to do so. Plan for anything new that you're going to need. So thank you very much for listening to that. We are going to be going to questions now. We've had quite a few come in during the webinar. So let me go through these and we'll take a look. 
Okay, we have a few questions that have come through now, so let's take a look at some of those. Um, we use Web ADI in 11.5.10, then how can we report against it? In release 12, we use Report Manager, but how about in 11? So the answer is in 11i, you can still use ADI for reporting purposes. It's still available for running, presenting, and drilling down on your FSGs and running other reports in 11i. So even if you bring Web ADI back to 11i, you can still use the ADI version for reporting in 11. The real changes happen in release 12. So that's a good question. Let's see, the next one coming through, can SLA ensure we always transfer data from subledger into GL only in a particular currency, um, if, for example, the functional currency or reporting currency? And the answer is, yep, you sure can. You can set up rules in SLA that determine the correct currency that's brought into GL. So it's a good question. Okay, so the third question we have here is, in Oracle 12, do we have reports that give balances as of some date? Today, most of the subledger reports only provide current balance data. So I would say that at Insight, we actually have reports that do as of reporting based in AP and AR. So within Insight, you can look at information at a particular point in time and also look at data in your GL based on any reporting period you've specified. For Oracle, they've added some fat extracts in here with release 12. They give you some tailored reporting uh, through BI Publisher, though there hasn't been a lot of development regarding the original content of standard reports. So there really are still very few as of reports available in Oracle release 12. One of the good questions that people ask a lot are, how do we know what tables have changed? Is there a list? And actually for you know, a good thing you can actually look at is the um, ETRM, the elect Electronic Technical Reference Manual that Oracle provides. However, they put a new tool available that's on Oracle support, and it'll actually go ahead and show you the table changes between a specific release in 11i and 12.1.3. So go ahead and look on the Oracle support website for that. It's actually pretty useful. It can be quite helpful. Another question is, um, what are the key differences between BI Publisher and OBIEE? So really it is that BI Publisher is used to help with the presentation of reports. For example, you know, formatting what a report looks like for a customer or you know, for your consumer of the report. So maybe a customer invoice or a check layout. But OBIEE is the analytical tool that's used to kind of give you those KPIs, those key performance indicators, dashboards, and there is some um, transactional reporting included in OBIEE. For us at Insight, a good question, can you bring in data from non-Oracle ERP systems? And so at Insight, we actually, we have the capability, we'll be coming through in our next release. It's part of our tool that is called Designer Express, and that will be released really in the second half of 2012. So that's coming up quite shortly. If you have questions about that, please feel free to drop us a line. We'd be happy to give you more information. And the last question we have is, do you have any recommendations on good sources to see changes coming into release 12? So just like you can look on Oracle support to see the differences between releases and the tool, um, the RCDs, those release content documents, are always available on Oracle support and actually provide a really good overview of the differences. Um, also, Steve Chan's blog is a really good source of information, um, and it has a bit of an applications technology focus, so we find that to be really useful. There are a few other questions that have come through that we don't have time to answer right now, but what we're going to do is send out a list of the questions and answers to everyone who's participated on this call. Or if you're listening to a recording of this and you, you'd like to know some more information, please drop us a line, and we look forward to hearing from you and talking to you in the future. Have a good day. This concludes the webinar. Thank you for joining us. Please stay tuned for the follow-up sessions in this series. To learn more, visit insightsoftware.com forward slash webinars.